we're going to sound like shit, but you know what? This is just the way it goes. Mm. And it's going to be wonderful. So um, cheers to you. Welcome. So we, we might cheers. as well start. We might as well, we're all out of sorts. So. I know. We're like cobbling it together. It's like, right? Time. We're like, hey, welcome to Creative Happy Hour, where we get drunk every day. Every now. day in court. <laughs> And we're doing our first virtual creative happy hour ever. Um, and it's kind of cool. I'm kind of excited. I know this is this is technology at work. It's probably gonna suck, but at least we're doing it. And we had a few technological issues, but <laughs> we think we've resolved them. I like your Stranger Things Christmas lights over there. That's pretty cool. You like that? I'm yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm representing um what's her name from Stranger Things. Exactly. Uh, Sometimes I get messed I can't remember it. I can't remember numbers or dates, so I can't remember what freaking name it. That's okay. Love I just I get messages from the upside down. So constantly. Kind of cool. Okay. I'm gonna open my Joyce Byers. That's who it is. Joyce Byers. Oh well that's the that mom wasn't even what I thought. that wasn't even what I was thinking. So you see. Huh. Um, anyway, what are you water. drinking? I'm drinking. Okay. I'm drinking. Cheers to you. I'm going to, I'm going to taste it and then we're going to find out Cheers. what we're drinking. Cheers into Cheers. the computer. Um, I'm drinking a cut water spirits, lime margarita, a ready to joy, enjoy cocktail that is tequila with natural lime, orange, and triple sec flavors. And I wiped this down with Clorox. So I don't know if it's going <laughs> to, oh, that's Cheers well, with Clorox. Let's see. So I'm going to taste it. Then you're going to tell us what you're drinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? It actually tastes like a margarita, which is surprising. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. I'm missing the salt and the ice like big time. Mm -hmm. I think that sipping this is a little depressing. Yeah. I'm noticing what a, what an issue it is not to have the, the glass. So I'm a little sad. Ooh, before we tell people your drink, we're going to be talking. We have to tell them what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. We're going to keep them in suspense. So what are we talking about today, Micah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not certain, but um, <laughs> exactly. But that leads me to talk about what we're talking about. Exactly. Um, I guess we're talking about <laughs> uh, creativity in the time of uncertainty. Totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about creativity in an uncertain time because I think all of you have noticed that you're trying, you thought, oh my God, I'm quarantined. I'm in my house. I have nothing else to do. I'm going to be so freaking creative and do all of my creative projects. And I think that a lot of us have noticed that maybe that's not so true. Like maybe you're not getting as much done. There's a scientific reason for that. And we're going to help you guys through it and talk about creativity in an uncertain time and um, using your uncertainty to fuel creativity, uh, mm -hmm. doing creative projects that are based on uh, uncertainty and also um, creating certainty anchors to uh, create some kind of security. Speaking of security, I like your security blanket. I see your fiber frequency. Yes, I have a fiber frequency. And this, I was very creative. This was actually a fiber frequency. Um, it's just like a shawl, scarf. I love it. With lots of random, there's some hand spun yarn in here. There's some random yarn that I found in my yarn bin. But um, yeah, it's funny because this was a project that I started a long time ago when I was working two jobs. And <laughs> and you were still managing like, oh my God, it's gonna kill me. <laughs> and I never finished it. And then, you know, I kind of finished it up now that I'm working no jobs. But um at it, least you managed to do it. Like that's impressive actually, because you know, I've been more super than creative and I, I think um I desperately needed the downtime. I, I'm sad that it came on the wings of a pandemic, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I've been really embracing it. And, um, I've gotten my spinning wheel out. I'm making yarn. I'm making a rug. I've knitted socks. We're doing a puzzle. I've, wow. you know, I, I've, I've cooked soups from random shit in my pantry. I, that I did I, that. I did that with varying levels of success. And there's a whole joke going on that my husband must be abused because he's actually eating some of the shit, which I won't do it. I mean, it's so gross. Oh my God. So um, speaking of uh, adjusting stuff. Hmm? Yeah, just adjusting to, I was thinking about what you were saying. And I think one of the things that kind of stops us creatively right now is this 
you know, I kept thinking, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to get all this yarn Mm because I have all this downtime. And then I'm like, oh, bitch, no, you're not because you're not spending any money. Right. Yeah. Because you don't have an income right now. So it's yeah. I mean, I definitely think it's um, one of those times where you have an excess of time. Mm -hmm. But you're starting to, and I don't think it's the same for everyone, but you're starting to be somewhat cognizant of what your resources are. There's definitely a lot of that. And I think that, so there are two different things. So in terms of coming up with all these bright ideas of, oh, wow, I should do this, like all of these creative ideas, all of this brainstorming, all of these things that come out of left field, like that is increased in a time of uncertainty, namely because we're having lots of nightmares. We are, you know, kind of freaking out and our brain is rushing through everything. And so we have to make sense of it. So like our idea mill is running over time. However, when it comes to productivity and actually getting it out there and into a form that we can use or display or as a creative, you know, make money out of or whatever. And also we we just think, what's the use? Because we think the world's going to tell us. Yeah, we're like, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. I'm going to go poor and hungry. Not going hungry yet, but, um, you know, that's going to happen. So what do I do? (laughs) Speaking of hungry, thirsty, ingesting, and soups, what are you drinking? Because Oh, I am drinking drinking a gin and tonic, just very classic. Oh, because the tonic is anti-COVID? Yeah, so there's been lots of talks about the the quinine, It Mm -hmm. you know, has been a remedy of some sorts. I think it's more in the quinine, I don't know the actual uh, pharmaceutical term for it, but it's essentially, you know, the quinine is in tonic water. So I thought I would- Yeah, yeah. And it, well, it's kind of an anti-malaria type thing. Anti-malarial. Which which is interesting because that's, you know, the one drug that they're touting as something that could help with COVID is an anti-malaria drug as well. So yeah. maybe it's, you know, I thought I would just get, you know, serendipitous with my quinine tonic water. And Lucky you. I really wanted fever view. Uh, is that what it, fever tree? Fever tree, fever fever tree our favorite, tree. our podcast That's favorite. That's my favorite one. Yeah. Fever yeah. tree. And I even had my, um, my neighbor was going to the store. I'm like, Hey, if you get any, you know, if you see any fever tree, mm-hmm. um, hook me up. And so anyway, I am drinking Schwab's. No, schwaps. 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 <laughs> I love how our but viewers. It's good. Are, yeah, it's good. No, it is good. I'm sure it's delicious. It's probably better than what I'm drinking. I love how our viewers get to see how radically different our two spaces are because last time they saw your space, it was during a blackout. So they couldn't tell yeah. um, what your house was like. And we see mine, which is all like monochromatic all the time. And, you yeah, know, and mine looks like and yours, pretty, which is. Yeah. Yeah, fiesta time. So that's yeah. fun. And I think it's like a college dormitory. Yeah, in the best possible way. Yeah, in a good way. But mm-hmm. I think that, you know, one of the big parts of creativity that happens, and so this is why we shouldn't beat ourselves up, all of that cooking that you mentioned and this nesting and being in your space, that is a big creative outlet. And I think that we're all so busy reorganizing, doing little household projects that is creative output. And we're beating ourselves up saying, I'm not being creative because I'm not making a painting or I'm not writing a book. Um, And that's, you know, that's one of those things that people need to realize that creativity comes in all guises. We've said this for a long time that, you know, you could be a creative entrepreneur and still be super creative, or you could be never doing anything artistic, but still be creative. So we need to see that, you know, here we are like kind of settling into our spaces and trying to inhabit them and make them work in a different way. You know, yeah, and I also think we are we're kind of downloading uh psychologically what's happening in the world. Oh, hell and yeah. I think about you know, when you know, I mean, not everyone can relate to this, but pregnancy is the time of you know where you're gestating, you're you're yeah, you're kind of baking a human, and, and that also involves some of, mm-hmm. yeah, and there's a period of time where you do that, what's called nesting, yeah, and you know, I know that I was cleaning, you know, nooks and crannies of closets and rewashing linens that were already washed in the, you know, yeah. and I went through like scrubbing walls and cleaning things that, and reorganizing and preparing my space for the birth of yeah. a child. But yeah. it could be, you know, we could be preparing for the birth of a creative project or a creative yeah. Or a breakthrough or something. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're all, I think we're all kind of getting ready for a new us because I think we're like, yeah. the way we've been living is not sustainable in a lot of ways. And yeah. I think that this virus kind of brought that to the forefront. And I think that this is a little bit of a, you know, we're becoming a little bit more, you know, uh, introspective, a lot of mm-hmm. us. So I think that there's going to be a lot of personal uh, and creative development happening for people. At least I hope so. I hope that, I hope that we don't all end up like those spring yeah. breakers when we get out of here. <laughs> but, um, but I think that that's, that's major. And I think that all these ideas that have been floating around. Oh, our heads, I think I'm gonna, yeah. I think Are you going to go to a break? bar and let's get wasted and go yeah, home? Yeah, let's do it. Um, let's, let's do, do it. really risky shit when this is over. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Florida when this is all done. And we can go, go to Target and like lick the, lick yeah. the, you know. Oh, we're going to lick it all. We're going to, yeah, we'll do Mardi Gras, like, uh, like all over. It'll be amazing. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I feel bad. I shouldn't, I shouldn't joke. I, you know, like I sent you that little video this morning. I was mm-hmm. sad to hear that John Prime is yes. one of my favorite, you know, he's a musician, singer, songwriter that I, I mean, mostly people sing his songs, although he does perform a lot, but right. you know, he, he's been a, huge influence in my life and and a lot of people I think musically and he's you know on a freaking ventilator right now exactly and we'll be Micah sent me a beautiful song that she played and sang and I'm trying to figure out the best way to share it with you guys um yeah don't get too excited because it literally looked like a troll that came out of like a hole in the ground (laughs) because I had just woken up I'm going to do a nice, I'm going to throw a nice filter on it. I think we're yeah, going to put it on IGTV. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do something very creative, mm-hmm. but, um, but it is beautiful and it's a beautiful tribute. And I think that we're, we're seeing, this is something where, first of all, we're all sharing in this. And I think that it's rare for so much of humanity to actually be going through the same thing all at once. I mean, national, mm-hmm. dis- like natural disasters don't even approximate this because it, they affect one part of the world geographically. And now this is like the whole world is going through this. And creatively, we've got to imagine that that's going to yield something really incredible. Um, well, and of course, we have to be. Mm. Oh, go ahead. No, Sorry. No, well, I was it's just so hard to like socially cue when you're on a screen. I oh, know. I know. It's impossible. Well, that and that's something else that we're going to like. That's the whole Brave New World thing yeah. that, you know, when we don't have the in person meetings, how does that work? And I think, again, creatively, like this makes us a little bit less free in our expression. I was thinking about how creatives are not able to um, work together in the same ways, you know, like you're not able to riff off of things or play music together um, in real time or real plays. Mm -hmm. You're not able to like my writing group is having to have zoom meetings and it's not the same rapport. I mean, there's some of it that that still Mm -hmm. works well, but man, if you're a dancer, what are you doing right now? You know what I mean? And that I think is something that's really frightening for creatives because you're going, why am I producing this stuff if nobody's going to be able to see, touch, smell, hear my stuff the way it's meant to be done? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I think that's that's a major reflection that a lot of um, artists and creatives are going to be having. And even creative entrepreneurs right now mm-hmm. having to pivot so completely from their original, you know, company model, business mm-hmm. model, because, you know, so many of these things we've seen are not sustainable for for various reasons. So. It's, well, I think there's a lot of a lot of businesses. I mean, the the positive side is that I think a lot of businesses wanted to be able to launch more, uh, um, more of these types of ways of you know, like work from home types of options, but they just yeah. weren't making it a priority because right. they didn't really have to. And um, but you know, I was listening to, you know, I'm really bad with names and dates, and I've been listening well, to. So this am I. So am I. Hello. <laughs> Professor Prof G podcast or something. Anyway, um, I just kind of came upon it and it, and I've been listening to him and he interviews scholarly people, people that are studying kind of the, you know, anthropology, social psychology, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I should, I should actually give you the name of this guy because he's so brilliant and he interviewed yeah, we, we him. We would all like to know, not just me. <laughs> I mean, I can look it up here in a minute. But one of the things that he talked about was how this is different, which is kind of fascinating to me uh, to look at it as he's a social scientist, to look at this as something that is, you know, generally with some kind of attacker, 
you know, like if, if someone declares war, or if there's a war right, that happens, right, we yeah. have this, you know, and, and we've seen it like during 9-11 and different disasters that we had, people come together physically mm-hmm. to help one another. And that is where we are evolved in the way that that's kind of how we roll. Right. And, and that's taken away from us. In yeah. any way as eloquently as this, this scholar did. Mm-hmm. But, um, but he is talking about how with something like, you know, a virus or a sickness, we've also evolved that sicknesses and viruses and bacteria have killed more people than wars have. Yeah. So we have this built in, you know, reaction that makes us afraid of other people when there's a threat like a virus right. or a sickness. And that is, that's a real kind of evolved genetic thing that we have. And, yeah, and usually you're afraid of the other, usually you're afraid of people who are not part of your tribe or not part of your neighborhood. Right. And now it's right. just kind of expanded to be, you know, nobody's safe. You know, your whole community is not safe. And I'm seeing how it's really affecting some people really, really. Well, like all the hoarding, yeah. all the toilet paper hoarders and that oh my kind God, of, yeah. yeah. He said it brings out these very like selfish types of behaviors. So they're very like socially kind of normal the way that he's looking at it. He's like, but yeah. we're having this circumstance in an unprecedented time where we actually have social media and we have ways to come together yeah. as a humanity, as you said, globally to respond to it in a way that we've never been able to respond to it. Even oh, yeah. in the uh, the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, people knew it was global, mm-hmm. but you still didn't have an ability to... No, I mean, you had a delay. Communicate globally. Right. Right. I mean, we talked, we talked about this when we talked about, um, you know, kind of the plague and the sickness, uh, creativity yeah. in the time of various diseases. We're talking about the Spanish flu, how it was more, there was a little bit of satire, newspaper articles, illustrations, things like that. And I find that with this disease as well, unlike others where it was, you know, music was talking about it, um, like, you know, AIDS had actually, I think that the form of AIDS was both pop art and music, right? It was pop pop art. Um, And then when you talked about other things, it was satirical drawings or it was paintings, you know, like the impressionists who were Mm -hmm. doing all of the typhoid paintings and this and that. So with this, our form of expression is the meme it's we are doing yeah everything with humor right now and i think that that's kind of amazing that we can find this universal thing and that gives us a certainty that we can all communicate in some way the the fact that we are all sharing this humor like some people feel bad some people are like oh my god we shouldn't be laughing at this but actually that is very you know helpful that is that is very um you know i'm, I'm looking for my word that i have completely lost because i'm so freaking out of it but uh, but but just well, that. it it helps remind you that that there is potentially while you're alive still light at the end of the tunnel. Like you you yeah. have to have some humidity. Humidity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just made up a new word, everybody. I love that. Yeah, well, that's that's a good creative one. happy hour. I, like, I should have just done that instead of looking for the right word. I should just just fucking up. make one up. There are no rules anymore. No, there are no it's rules. A, uh, it's a free market. But I I like what you said that. So that's the thing is that so what we're talking about today in terms of this creativity in an era of uncertainty is that our recommendation would be that you need to come up with some kind of a certainty anchor or more, you know, multiple certainty anchors that are things that you can control and that you know that those things will be there tomorrow. Um, and I would do more than one because God, with my luck, like my certainty anchors just, you know, well, I'm like, at least I still have my coffee and then my coffee machine breaks. It's like, Oh my God. When you said certainty anchor, the first thing I thought of was coffee. And then I immediately went to catastrophic thinking and I'm like, what if they can't get my Sumatra organic Sumatra because of chain of custody? And I have to drink Folgers, the shit that they sweep up off of the, yeah. The factory floor. Right. So so we need, yeah, we need a few different certainty anchors because chances are that one or two of your certainty anchors is not as much of an anchor as you thought it was. Um, We've seen this to be abundantly true time and time again, especially with our luck. But, you know, what are the certainty anchors that you can have? And, you know, you as a fiber artist, 
one of your anchors was that you'd be able to work on fiber art. So you went and you got, you know, some more materials. You made sure that your equipment was around you when all of this shit hit the fan so that you would have. Yeah, I went and bought the sheep yarn, the, the kind mm-hmm. of shit like, like circus yarn that I would never buy. Right. But you otherwise. Were, and yeah. now I've, it's changed my tune because I'm like, whatever, I can just be like, it. it's like free form. It's, it's mm-hmm. like, it's. I, I don't know. I've been really happy that I bought like a ten dollar ginormous acrylic ball of purple yarn. I mean, I've had a oh, yeah. lot of fun with it. Right. It will exactly like I think that you can have a lot more fun with things. I think you can go in a direction that you wouldn't have the time or energy to go in, or maybe because you don't have the energy because we're all a little bit depleted just in terms of our, you know, my yeah. my optimism is a little down. But um, but I'm still working on things that I wouldn't have time or the concentration to do though I do find that I don't have the concentration that I wish I had because I think that in the background there's all this shit that's playing so I was like well at least I still have my laptop at least I can still do this and then my damn dog hangs herself on the laptop and almost breaks the charger and I was just like oh my god there's no apple store right now like if my laptop yeah. broken like that is my major certainty anchor down the drain. So that's why people are getting so pissed right now when, you know, if their cable goes down or the electricity goes off for an hour, there's, you know, about to murder someone or yeah. their favorite coffee is not available at the market. They're like, are you fucking kidding me? Which when I think I get I think <laughs> see like all of this. Well, it's interesting because I've been having like fights with my boyfriend, Paul, because mm-hmm. he's a severe introvert as it is. Right. But this is just a this is just like, oh, it's like culturally acceptable to be completely introverted and never leave your house again. And, yeah. and so like him and my daughter are going like deeper into this introvert, introverted lifestyle. And I'm, I'm somewhat introverted. I, I would say that, you know, I crave downtime. I crave time by myself, but I'm way, way more extroverted than they are. Obviously I wouldn't be doing a, a video podcast. If I right. Wasn't. No. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I crave more social interactions. Even if I spend a whole day reading and hanging out by myself, I will end up getting on the phone with one of my friends for an hour and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, because I need that, you know, I yeah. need that social mm-hmm. connection. And, um, but you know, I was having all of these and, and it was interesting because I had to have a conversation with him about that certainty. I was like, well, you know, you said we were going to do this, we were going to hike together and then you didn't show up. And then that was a you know, certainty anchor triggered. that you were, you were yeah. on that. It yeah. triggers your uncertainty. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. well, every other fucking thing is uncertain. Right. You're like, now everything so now else is going to fall thing, apart. This thing that you think is certain mm-hmm. feels uncertain. So you start, you know, like mm-hmm. I start flipping out. And, oh, yeah. and I think you can find that, you know, you're, you're stuck in the house with people or you're, mm-hmm. you're not stuck in the house with people. You're, you're away from people that you want to be with mm-hmm. and you, you're trying to translate some kind of certainty. Oh, totally. A hundred percent. Well, it's funny because yeah. I was on the phone with um, a friend who's, whose creativity right now is being expressed a lot in gardening. She's over in Virginia. Yeah. She gardens all the time. Like in Virginia, a lot of the people are kind of rubbing everybody else's noses in it because they're like, well, I don't care because my life is all about riding my horse and gardening and I can still do that. I'm like, good for you. But um, <laughs> I'm like, that's great. Stop it. Um, but but she was like, wow, you know, it's amazing that you guys, because we, we planned a happy hour on Zoom uh, or on FaceTime, I can't remember. And I was like, you know, let's plan it so-and-so time. And she's like, wow, that's just amazing. You know, we always leave it so loosey-goosey. I can't believe you planned this. And that was really nice. And I was just like, you don't understand. Like I had to plan it so that I knew that there was something that I could actually count on, you know, yeah. to not even to look forward to. That's not even it. It's like just something that I knew was actually going to happen. Yeah. You know, like these days, like you don't even like today I went to the supermarket and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go to Trader Joe's. Like, here's what I'm going to buy. I'm going to cook. And I'm not enjoying cooking as much as I could. So I was like, let me give myself a little certainty anchor in my cooking. I'm going to do a week of yeah. recipes. And it made me feel so much better. So I was like, oh, great. I have this plan. And that's what yeah. I tell my writers too, of like, okay, I want you guys to make a plan so that you know what's going on. Well, 
my little certainty anchor blew apart because I show up at Trader Joe's and the line's going around the building. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I did that the other day. And it's an hour to get into the store. Yeah. And I was like, I don't have an hour, even though I do have an hour, but I was like, I don't have an hour. And so I go to Whole Foods where, you know, now I'm regretting because Whole Foods is literally two times more expensive and I'm pissed. And I, you know, mama needed to buy a lot more wine than she did. But anyway, and, and I was (laughs) like, wow, that just really fucked up my whole day because now my little recipe that I planned on is not going to be the same. Does it matter in the greater scheme of things? No, but in my little world where everything yeah. else has been wiped out, like, damn, it does count. And it pissed me off. So like with my writers, I'm telling them, you guys, you need to have some anchors that you're giving yourself. Yeah. And like, you're actually not doing yourself a favor if you're not doing the work that you said you would do. Like you are wiping yeah. out your own certainty anchors. And it's kind I, of- tricky. I think right now you're right about that. I think you you have to- you know, one of the things that I've been doing is writing little lists, even if mm-hmm. it's three, like today I had to submit a form for my daughter's school district transfer that, the, you know, they need more information from the school. So I did that. I, um, I, you know, I filed for unemployment. However, I don't even know. I had to go through paperwork and review oh all that. So yeah. I did it. But, I've you know, I had those all are of- so backed up too. It's crazy. Yeah. And and it was like, it was a matter of me put, putting my eyes on it, thinking that I had to do something and I really didn't, but I, I needed to actually focus my attention mm-hmm. for 20 minutes to read the paper, to understand it, you know? And it's like, see, that's what I, I feel. I feel that my concentration is, is shot. Yeah. Shot. And, and there's yeah, like, and you feel, and you, and you feel like such an asshole because you're like, how can I possibly, how can my my attention not be there when there's nothing going on. And that's the big problem. I think that's where people, and, and honestly, less people think that this is just an episode that's going to help them during this time. This is actually a really crucial episode for other things. Like if you go on our, an artistic retreat or you go on a writing retreat, or you go on, you know, some kind of a thing where the whole plan is to have nothing to do other than doing your creative thing you will see that all of a sudden it gets really, really hard when you're faced with this big open time Mm -hmm. and space of like, what the hell, that it becomes really, really hard to all of a sudden focus and have that attention and have that structure. And I it's think like a, it's yeah. like a vacuum. It's I, a I vacuum. Think. You're so you know, right. It's a vacuum that half of your energy goes into because again, as humans, we are, we thrive on schedules. We thrive yeah. on predictability. We're boring creatures. We like the predictable. We like knowing that, Hey, today's Monday. We're filming creative happy hour. And it's so funny. Cause like we could be filming this any freaking day, any freaking time, but are we still filming it on Monday? Yes, we are. Yeah, but, we are because yeah. that's, that's our little anchor. I <laughs> think, um, yeah, I know. I agree with that. And I think one of the things I wanted to say and remind everyone that, you know, that all of that certainty, and this is, you know, living proof right now in our current situation is there, you know, this certainty that we think we have is an illusion. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And that, you know, having some, a little bit of like kind of touching that void, not to be cheesy, but like, you know, kind of, I think that's why people that have like a near death experience will often start living their life to the mm-hmm. fullest after that experience. Yeah. I mean, you always read that or hear that story. Yeah. And, and those I, who don't are just total assholes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you just say they, they like, you just want to kill them anyway. It's right? like the rednecks who were hit by lightning like three times. And does anything ever change? No, but you know, fundamentally, maybe that's just who they are, but oh my God, I'm not even going to say some of the things that came to my mind. Cause it's just so like repulsive, but, um, <laughs> and unacceptable, but, um, <laughs> that I even have thoughts like that. But anyway, um, yeah, I think that, you know, we are grasping for this certainty that, you know, obviously we never really had to begin with. Right. Completely, you know, the only, completely. I think this is just a rude awakening as to yeah. how uncertain everything actually is. And that we, 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 yeah, we totally con ourselves into thinking that we do have the certainty when no, we really don't. And that's why, having the certainty anchors, like being able to count on yourself to provide that stability and to provide that schedule for yourself and to provide that accountability, because that's the other thing. When we're hiding away at home, you're not accountable to anyone or so you think. So my writer is like trying to rope them in and be like, hey, fuckers, did you do your homework? Did you do? They think that they can hide. 
And I'm yeah. just like, you know, and, and I'm nicer than I sound. I, you know, they know I'm not going to beat the crap out of them for not writing, but they, they feel like they're more hidden and it's just such a great thing for them. But it's not like, I'm like, you're cheating yourself out of something that you could have had this sense of yeah. throughout all of this. But I'm finding that I'm having to do lots more lists. Like you said, lots more for basic crazy. shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Go to the store. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like I never got the garbage. You yeah. know, that used to be basic. Yeah. But for me, like now it's like, oh, I need to actually think about that. Whereas it was routine for me right. when things were. So, so I actually like what you just said about the routine and writing down things that are kind of basic. So there is a kind of writing exercise that can actually help you guys to kind of work through everything. And I think that we can bring that up. It's, it's this whole, I'm going to find a name of what it's actually called. Cause again, um, Oh, it's called expressive writing mm. <laughs> and expressive writing is designed to separate yourself from your stress response that you're having because of all of this uncertainty. Um, and it, so it directly lowers the stress hormones that are actually keeping you from being as productive and as creative as you could be. Because as I said before, the stress makes you have more brainstorming, but makes you less productive in your creativity. It shuts everything down. So this expressive writing is a feel better skill that is going to help everyone. So basically you're creating some mental and, and emotional space and you're substituting more rational responses. So I'm going to give quickly the steps to this. The steps are awareness, separation, and reprogramming. And mm. so basically, the first step, awareness, you write down your negative thought. So you write down, I'm never going to manage to make anything again, or I'm never going to be able to play music with my friends again, or whatever. You know, like you end of the world, and end yeah, of the world is never going to be able to pay my rent. I'm, yeah, I'm going to get coronavirus and die, and I'll never do anything again. Yeah, all of that. Then step two, separation, is when you point out how the way you're thinking is separated from reality. So you point out like the logical error in your thinking. You're like, I'm exaggerating. I'm, you know, catastrophizing. I'm, um, you know, victimized. This isn't true because you give the proof. Yeah. This isn't true because I haven't left my house in two weeks. So Absolutely. how could I get Absolutely. it in the water? Like that doesn't right. make any sense. Or this isn't or true. Or I'm just playing the victim. And chances are, even if I were to get it, like I have a smaller chance. You know, like trying to, or like, you know, I'm, I'm playing poor me when in reality I could be producing right now, blah, blah, blah. Right. And the yeah, last step is the reason. This is very much like the what you do when you when you have anxiety for anxiety this people. Is exactly they it. have to Well yeah. They have this yeah. is they have to do this process. A hundred percent. This is the bring in the process. rational brain. A hundred percent. That is the this is the same process because the uncertainty creates anxiety. So the last part is the reprogramming where you replace your crazy thought with the rational thought. And you repeat it to yourself enough, you write it down enough, you repeat it to yourself enough that you start to believe it. And once you've written all this stuff down, you destroy that piece of paper. You literally burn it or throw it away or flush it. Use it as toilet paper because we know we need the toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> but, Wipe but your ass with it, people. Yeah. But literally, like, throw that away because you're throwing away the negative thoughts. And I think it's a very, very um, helpful, helpful thing. So that was something that I had had people working on. And I think it's something that all artists and all creatives can, can use, you know, to, to help themselves in this time. Um, so I, I found, I found the, the name of the, oh, um, awesome. so the podcast is the Prof G show. Okay. And you can look that up. The Prof G. And yeah, everyone look it up. Prof G. He's a professor. I don't know where, I guess NYU. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, the, the episode was the post Corona world. Oh yeah. Episode That's two, fascinating. I, I think we'll have to, we'll and he to interviews play. Jonathan Haidt. He's a social psychologist, H A I D T. Jonathan Haidt oh. He's an author. He's a professor at NYU. Love it. And he discusses the psychological and social impact of COVID-19. So, I mean, it, it's a fascinating listen. It, it, that That is just fascinating in general. And I think that it's something that we're going to keep talking about for a really, really long time. Yeah. He takes a, a positive twist on it, though. I think if you can do these exercises in the meantime, you know, right, doing this work mm -hmm. that you just described where yeah. you you go through the process of 
re-engaging your rational mind. I mean, I, I am a believer in like, you know, there, there's some, I don't remember who I was listening to. I, I think it was Tar Brock. And she was like, you know, when the fear comes up, you say, thank you, fear. Thank you for keeping me safe. You know, like the fear is there evolutionarily to remind you like, oh, something's not safe. Right. So right. you thank the fear and you move on. Right. And, yeah. and the same with this anxiety, you know, you, you have the experience, you honor it. And I think by doing the writing exercise, and going through that process, you do honor it. You're like, okay, I get it. You're anxious. You're flipping yeah. out. You don't know if you're going to eat again. You're, you know, you're drinking too much. You're, you know, you don't know if you're going to, you're not drinking enough, whatever it is, you know, you're, you're afraid you're going to run out of coffee. You're, yeah. you know, whatever it is, you write it down, like you said, and you honor it. And then you re-engage your, your rational mind. Totally. And I think it'd be really helpful to set, like, as you were talking about the list writing, to set a creative intention for yeah. like micromanage. So there's a new, so we were talking about how um, this kind of anxiety and this uncertainty, you know, you get these crazy ideas, but you don't get productive with them. So I have mm. a productivity exercise, which is in a time of uncertainty, you don't want to devote yourself to going all in on a creative thing mm. because you feel like what's the use and the energy that you are spending because it takes a lot of energy. When you put mm. yourself into a creative project, you get into that zone where you don't know what time it is. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, like that's an amazing zone to be in, but I do think it takes a lot out of you even more so when you think that you need to be doing this fight or flight, you know, survival thing instead of playing around being creative. So, so yeah, so you need to give yourself kind of permission to be productive and to put that energy into your productivity. Mm -hmm. So you need to jump into it 90 minutes and then give yourself a fun break. So you guys, that's kind of all that we can give right now. And thanks to zoom, we only had 40 minutes for our podcast. Mm -hmm. woo, woo. We, it was a creative happy hour. It was a creative happy 40 minutes and we hope that you guys <laughs> enjoyed it. And let us know what you're doing creatively and we will get drunk on the creative possibilities with all of you next time. Next time. Next Cheers. Time. Cheers. Bye guys. <laughs>